Drift Force is from Capstone Games and One More Time Games. I did not get a chance to go by the booth and talk about this game. But Chris did pick it up for me um, so we could review it. And it looks like Teradus Games loves this, uh, loves Rift Force, and they picked it up at Gen Con. So I'm sure they could talk about the gameplay and what, is it, what it's like as we're unboxing it. If there's anything I miss or should show off more, feel free to tell me in chat. Because I know nothing about this game, to be honest. But that's not a problem. That's the fun of doing reviews and unboxings, is finding out more about new games. And learning about them and trying them out and exploring everything this hobby has to offer. So this is from Carlo Bordolini. I believe I said that right. Art by Miguel Coimbra. If I said that wrong, you can correct me. Uh, saying the game is pretty simple. Cards and hit tokens. Okay. Sounds straightforward enough. Now if you look at the artwork on the back, it seems like it's a pretty simple layout. Almost like a stream of the cards laid together. Uh, being a two-player game, it looks like you sit across from each other, play on each side of that as well. It's saying you choose one of three actions to play uh, as you're playing. And it was a recommendation list of the 2021 Kinderspiel de Jars. So, highly um, ranked, I don't want to say ranked, or recommended apparently, if it made that list. So, be interesting one to check out at bare minimal. And then just first thoughts about the artwork. I like the contrast and the pop and kind of the subtle detail. Um, because at first you see these two characters right here kind of uh, representing fire and ice in some way, but then looking deeper, uh, each of these things seem to almost have faces and that are attacking in the background as well. So it's not just a simple element. It, they've added some kind of hints of detail that are fun to find. Okay, so we've got a rule book on top. Uh, pretty easy contrast, so it's easy to read. Credits right here on the front. Okay, nice, and nice straightforward list of components. Uh, it kind of breaks it down in the different types as well. And then goal of the game right at the beginning, which is always important because when you play a game, you want to know, at least for me, when you're playing a game, you know there's someone's going to win in some way. So you need to know the goal of how you're going to go about winning, not just the general rules, but the end goal. So it's nice to see that at the beginning of a rule book. Hey, here's the goal. Now we're going to talk about how you achieve that goal and then come back to that goal at the end. It's kind of like writing a, a really good paper. Um, there's you always have to come back to the premise of what you're writing about uh, so then it talks about guilds uh, setting up uh, for selecting the guilds and then general setup at the table which this is a really nicely done layout in this um, the way it breaks this apart uh, for both general and personal and then showing a full setup on the table uh, and not just a straight down or flat it's it feels like you have a perspective at the table you might be looking at it at an angle so I, I like when it does this because you're not always going to be perfectly staring straight down at it kind of like the, you're seeing from this camera or something and then the way they've numbered it as well that's well it's uh, pretty common in the industry now that is something we've grown accustomed to and actually want to see in, in these to make it easy for setup so when it's missing it's more noticeable and you're, you're kind of craving it again. So then it talks about gameplay, it looks like. Uh, some decent examples that it breaks down. Uh, the end game, uh, general FAQ, which is nice to see. And then the back, uh, it talks about guilds with icons, so that's always uh, helpful to have handy. So I don't know if it's going to have reference cards, but having that on the back of the rule book you can set on the table is always nice as well. Okay, and then we have our... It looks like a single punch board. And so, of course, we have to go back to our ASMR mode. Uh, do a quick check of what this sounds like. Give us a good idea of how nice this punch board is. Uh, this seems to be pretty standard thickness. Uh, probably like a 3 mil, uh, millimeter cardboard. So let's listen. 
Okay, that has a pretty nice snap to it, I will admit. Uh, but it is coming off pretty nicely. Um, the tab is a bit more visible on the edge of it, but no tearing, uh, double-sided printing, which is nice. And just in general, it's punching nice. It sounded nice. I can't complain about that. Yeah, so you can see, like, I'm just giving it a simple center push, and a lot of these are hanging. So that that sound, I, I could tell that it was a thicker tab to begin with and was more likely to have, have this hanging if it were to. No, that's not always the worst. Uh, a lot of these will do that, and then if you just kind of give it a little bit more pressure, it'll pop right off that hanging tab. Um, I've, I've found some that have a tab so small or don't do tabs that they fall off in the box before you get to punch them and kind of miss out on punching. So finding that right balance of how big a tab to put is, is hard to achieve sometimes. And so I, I can't complain about the size of those tabs it was at least very pleasurable to hear that snap. Um, I didn't see any tearing. So ultimately, uh, a very nice punch board. And those are different tokens. Uh, looks like different numbers on them. And then two different, uh, some different colored ones as well. And then we got uh, two packs of cards. Let's see if they have a quick release of any type or how they're packaged. Take a closer look. Why does it feel like it should have one? If I can just find the beginning of it. So it's, it's really subtle and hard to see, but right across the middle of this package, you can see a seam. So the trick is finding the edge of it. Typically it's gonna be along the side of the, the whole package. Now, of course, it didn't help that I cut my nails earlier this week, so I can't grab it. Yeah, I may end up having to take a knife to this just because I can't grab that edge. Yep, but fortunately, it does have the extra stuff on the bottom. It's a very loose package, so this won't be as hard to cut. And I'll go ahead and cut, uh, cut open this second package as well while we're at it. It looks like there's going to be some cards in that that match the style. Okay, so we have a stack of the those maps type cards and the rest of these, or not quite all of them. The rest of the stack was had that same backing. Let me split the rest of these out those CBA more of those potential so we can switch to our other view now to look at our cards and we'll go with the map ones first and then go back to the others so based on what I saw in the rule book in the back of the box these get laid out in a line connecting uh, Long, uh, so it makes a very long map. Kind of really interesting uh, terrain to see on these. Um, I don't know. So I'm assuming these number ones go together at like the end of the line. I'm not sure if the order of the rest of them matter. I, we, of course, have to look at the rules. But the contrast of that, that pink, uh, I guess it's the rift force line through, through this whole terrain. Uh, really pops with that color um, and then the subtle detail of the, the mountains and the trees and the village stuff is really is really nice um, at least pleasing to see it it's not like uh, over the top vibrant or too bright where it hurts your eyes but it's not so dull that it's not interesting so I enjoy it I'm enjoying what I'm seeing so far so let's see what else we got 
Uh, we said we had these C, B, A cards, A, B, C, and then see what they say. So they have three different actions on them. Uh, there's a action A, play, play up to three elements from your hand. Action B, activate, discard element from your hand on the discard pile with some other stuff in action C, check and draw. Um, so I kind of wonder if these are just reference cards in general that stay on the table or if um, somehow you uh, play one and then don't have it anymore or something. Now, these backed have the yellow lettering as opposed to the white lettering of the rest of the deck. So we'll see what these entail first. Uh, looks like some different uh, guild icons on them. Uh, potential different fighters or enemies, what have you. Look, we have a fire guild. We have, it looks like air guild. This one appears to be a earth guild. And then we have water guild, a thunderbolt guild. I do like the diff the detail in this artwork is uh, adds a lot of depth to these pictures, but keeping the character forefront. And that's a shadow guild. This one is a plant guild, and actually it actually looks kind of like a shrub, uh, tree type, uh, kind of bark skin style plant. Uh, and then this one is crystal. We have a light. And the last one is ice. Okay, it's saying it's a bit of a Scott and Totten line defense game built on elemental uh, wombo combos. Each player drafts four of the elements and takes their cards and power to form their deck. Okay, interesting. So I, I still have yet to try uh, Scott and Totten. Um, I do know that's kind of another pocket size quick game. But. I'd have to look that up to, to see how that compares, but I do thank you for that comparison. That, that'll help other viewers understand what it's about. Okay, and then so we got some different decks based on the different uh, guilds. So there are some various numbers, and then you got kind of a, not a full character art, but kind of like the elemental uh, character style with the same terrain. So each guild has its own color scheme as well. It does look like the art on each one is the same, just the numbers tend to change a little bit within each guild's deck. And then we got, okay, we got room right here for that one. That was the earth one. And to also help differentiate the colors, each one, each guild has its own uh, icon symbol, which is next to the number. Easy to reference. So like if you're not spreading all your cards out, looking at all the artwork, you can have them closer together. Just look at your corners and see the difference. These are fire. No, it kind of looks like it's throwing a fireball. Our air one seems to be like blowing a tornado out. These cards do feel a little thin. Um, so I would recommend being careful when you shuffle them. Um, I could feel at least one of the edges of the cards was already catching and feeling a little rough and not perfectly smooth anymore. And that felt just like right out of the package. So I'm, I'm sure if you're not careful, these could easily bend and the edges could get roughed up if you play this a lot. So I might recommend if you're prone to have sleeves laying around and like using them, I would probably sleeve this game based on the quality I've seen so far. Um, I'm not saying they would get destroyed immediately, but I could feel the edge of one of those and I can tell that they're a little bit thinner. So if you are if you like to riffle shuffle, 
uh, I, I could see these potentially bending faster. But overall, I really enjoy the artwork so far. Um, let's see, the game came with uh, multiple bags, so it looks like you can put the decks of cards in some of the bags, all your chits in another. And then, of course, the box, the artwork continues inside into the insert, which is always nice to see that they've taken the time to do that. So I'm going to pack this up real quick. And we'll, we can move on to our next game. Now let's see, these are probably going to be the stacks I would keep them in. And that would fit. Okay, so I'm going to do that stack together, these cards together, and then the chits. So that would be my three bags. We'll see how well the cards fit into these bags if I were to keep them split like this, or if I have to split them differently. These are a little bit longer bags, but they're, the opening is not super wide. So, as you can tell, I'm trying to force a full stack in immediately probably will not happen. But after I get them in, I'm sure they will stack within the bag. Like so. Yep. So there's that. And they do fit nicely sideways in there, so they're not going to slide around as easily. Um, now, I know there's a lot of arguments out there on box sizes versus component size. Um, personally, I like it when uh, components essentially completely fill a box. Uh, with very little uh, spare room, uh, so you don't need excessive inserts. Now this one's kind of one of those in-between ones. They they fortunately went with a decently uh, skinny box, but kind of like the box for uh, Bunny Party that we recently opened. I'm sure all this could have fit could have fit in a smaller box if they went with the slightly smaller rule book page, and that would have made this more. Uh, travel friendly, uh, easier to throw in, especially being a two player game. Uh, you may be traveling with family or sitting next to each other or something on a plane or at a restaurant. So a slightly smaller box would have made this easier to travel with and potentially helped on that regard. But now that each manufacturer, it's easier, sometimes easier to get certain size boxes. So I can't say why they made the choice. It's not a terrible choice. I'm glad it's not a huge box like you sometimes see with um, some of the other games where it uses like not even a fourth of the, the box space. Now, uh, part of why I bring that up, because we always do, or try always try to do our shake test. Now this is how components fit back in the box if they slide around too much, if they're gonna fall open. This box does fit together quite nicely, so we don't have much of uh, a box lid potential falling off of it. Let me do our shake test. Because you know on the shelf we put them sideways on its edge. You might know, you know, throw it into the trunk of your car or something, whatever it may be. Uh, games are meant to be used, carried around. So you want some sense of being able to, of it to be able to stand up to, I don't want to say abuse, but to everyday wear. And so I do that shape test and then see what components look like inside. Now we know that this should be pretty straightforward the way those fit. So we knew they weren't move, going to move around a lot. So I'm pretty confident that those pieces would stay safe 